Hello friends and welcome to Storytime with Fade. Today we are reading Tana's Owl. It's written by Rachel and Sean Kitsulik Tinsley and illustrated by Yong Ling Kang. Hope you enjoy today's story. And let's jump right in. Tana's Owl. I just wanted to read this little excerpt. It says, I had a lot of strange pets growing up. That was how things were way back in the Arctic of many decades ago. Animals were around us all the time. We didn't just need them to survive. They were our companions. We used to respect them. Our ancient stories even said they were family. Inuit have lots of names. That's because some of them are magical. Tana is one of my magical names. It means that one over there. Owls are magical too. Inuit were always careful way back to note whatever belonged to the land, sea, or sky. And the most magical animals were those who brought these things together. Owls, you see, can fly, but they're raised on the land, so they bring land and sky together. I'm about to tell you a little bit about my owl. In truth, it wasn't even my owl. I don't think you can really own an animal or a piece of land or anything, actually. You can only bring things together, learn to help, to care. I wonder if my father wanted me to know that. Okay, here we go. Summer began and Tana's owl arrived. Her father had returned from hunting. With him, he brought an owl. Why did father get me such an ugly thing, thought Tana. The baby owl was round, gray, brown. Its eyes were big and yellow. Its beaky mouth seemed wide enough to swallow its own head. But Tana thought, it's somehow cute. You'll have to take good care of it, father told her. It has no mother. It'll need to eat two or three times a day. That night, Tana set her alarm for four o'clock a.m. She had the shortest sleep of her life. She had to catch lemmings. There were no bird food, and the owl wouldn't have eaten it anyway. But her brothers and sisters helped. Tana named the owl Ukpik, the Inuktuk for owl. Ukpik lived in her father's workshop. Tana thought of the bird as a she. Line the floors with paper, said father, as it will poop a lot. When Ukpik did not get her food right away, early in the morning, she would stomp her feet. She would sway back and forth. She would chomp her beak. At least she can communicate, Tana thought to herself. After feeding Ukpik, Tana would stare into the bird's light golden eyes. She wondered if owls had thoughts. Father, does Ukpik know she's an owl? asked Tana. It knows you feed it, father said, smiling. Ukpik soon tired Tana out. The owl became more and more demanding, no matter how much Tana fed her. Ukpik still stomped, swayed, chomped. Tana wondered if the bird was sick. She took Ukpik outside and placed her on the ground. What do you want, you alien thing? Tana demanded. Ukpik just stared at her. Then, crippily, the owl turned her head around backwards, watching the family dogs looking at Ukpik like that made Tana's own neck feel sore. Soon, Tana's brothers and sisters grew sick of catching lemmings. Owls need lemmings, Tana protested. But they'd seen Ukpik eat. They said she was gross. Can Ukpik eat fish? Tana asked father. It can probably eat whatever fits in its mouth, he told her. Soon, Ukpik was eating any kind of meat or fish, even caribou. The owl was no longer cute. Feeding her was an awful chore. Ukpik's beak was sharp as blades. She snatched at her food. Tana had to wear gloves. One rainy day, Tana took Ukpik outside. The owl was no longer gray and brown. She was growing white plumes. The feathers on her feet were thick as polar bear fur. Her talons were little, were like little black knives. Ukpik looked around as though bored. Then she stared at the sky as though to say, I should be up there. 
Tana picked up the owl and moved her up and down. Akpik was too young to fly, but she started to flap her wings. Maybe, thought Tana, pretending to fly will make her feel better. Summer ended. Tana had to leave her community for school. She worried about Akpik, who had been left behind and had never flown. But Tana was happy not to get up at 4 o'clock a.m. or catch lemmings or see stomping, or hear chomping. When the next summer arrived, Tana came home. Ukpik was gone. It was grown, father told her. The owl didn't belong to us. It had to fly free. She flew, thought Tana, and she smiled. One day, Tana went walking. Even though Ukpik had been so much work, she missed the owl, a little. Tana picked an arctic poppy, it's golden petals like frozen sunlight. Then she was startled by movement, something white, an Ukpik. The beautiful owl landed on a rocky hill, purple with tiny flowers. It blinked at Tana. Its eyes were the same color as Tana's poppy. My Ukpik, Tana wondered. Bird and girl watched each other for a long time. Arctic wind stirred Tana's black hair and the owl's white together. Tana didn't know if this was Ukpik. She wanted to believe, though. She wanted to think that Ukpik had come by just to show how lovely she'd become. Maybe, Tana thought as she walked away, beauty is worth some work. The end. I hope you enjoyed today's story, friends. Until next time, see you again.